with weapons. They gathered us in a room and introduced a man to us. He is a murdered brother of ours. They introduced him to us. The latter addressed us and announced the, the start of the jihad to free our religious brothers from prison. Do not be afraid. Dress lightly and wear black clothes to be less noticeable at night, he told us. We moved in the streets in groups of two or three. I went to a military unit near the locality called Krepest. He himself led the operation to attack the military unit and seize arms from there. Then he told us to go to the prison. He led us there. I saw how militant killed people. They are violent people. They killed people with utter brutality. They shot people. I was scared to do this when I saw all this. The religion is a cover for them. Their aim is to overthrow the government, seize the power and set up the Halifat. When I was freed from the prison in the morning, I was given an assault rifle. Shortly after the Sharif Rokirov took my assault rifle and gave me a pistol instead, saying that the assault rifle was necessary for brothers on guard. Our main aim of taking people hostage was to torture them, to obtain information from them. Only personnel of the law enforcement agencies and state servants were taken hostage. Taking hostages were our task. We led the hostages upstairs and tortured them with our brothers there. We tortured them and did not listen to their pleas for mercy. They pleaded with us to stop torturing them and asked us to shoot them, but we didn't listen to them and continued torturing them, beating them with assault rifles and pistols. We came to Uzbekistan from Kyrgyzstan from behind those concrete slabs. There were about 70 of us. We were led by a man called Akram Mamadaliyev. Half of us had weapons. And what about you? I also had one. Do you remember who else had submachine guns? To tell the truth, I did not know most of them. About 30 of men were familiar to me, but I did not know the other 40. We delivered more than 20 assault rifles, some pistols and ammunition to Andijan. Our aim was to arm our boys. We had also future plans for our activities. Members of Hizbut Tahrir, Islamic movement of Uzbekistan leader Tohir Yuldosh people and, Az and Wahhabis supported us. They planned to achieve their goals through our movement. Lads from Kyrgyzstan were trained in the first place. It was easier in Kyrgyzstan. To carry out this kind of activity was easier in Kyrgyzstan than in Uzbekistan. That is why the training was carried out in Kyrgyzstan. We learned to fire pistols and assault rifles in the Kyrgyz hills. Following the events in Andijan on 12th and 13th May, I have become convinced of one thing. We did nothing good to our nation, to our families. We did nothing good to anyone. What we did were bad deeds. Because of us, many people were killed. After the events of 12th and 13th May, I have become convinced that the Crimea group is a disgust, disgusting group. The aim of such groups is to destroy peace in Uzbekistan. They invite peaceful life in Uzbekistan. Having been in their camps, I have become convinced of this. I was stupid to pay money to them over the past five or six years for nothing and to turn my life into a swamp. In the end, I understood that none of four sons of my mother should stay with them. I told them about all the difficulties that I had faced there. I asked my president and my people to forgive me for the wrongdoing I committed unknowingly and for ungratefulness to prosperous life. This happened because I was misled by certain religious sects and believed in their lies. I saw in the way to keep the Andijan people there in the square as long as possible. We decided 
to find money to pay them. A man called Muhammad Ali suggested selling heroin for this purpose. We will make big money in one day, he said. We will distribute money among the people on the square and make them stay there. We should do everything in our power to make people stay there, he said. He was named Batr Ahmonov and Muhammad Ali injecting themselves with heroin in the regional administration building. Some more guys were queuing for injecting themselves with heroin. They became very villainous. I was terrified to see them like this as I considered them to be Muslims. I could not believe that they were such a people and that they had such goals. After receiving a weapon, I went to a prison to release 23 young people from there. A shooting took place there. Then we released 23 young people from there. Then we went to the administration building with weapons. We went up to the second floor of the building. We tied up the hands of 20-30 hostages comprising police officers, servicemen and others. Me, Sharif Shakirov and Ghulam Nadirov tortured them. The rebels said they had come to help their religious brothers. Their brothers were violent people, not ordinary people. Some of them were armed. They killed people. They gathered people in the middle of the square and forced them to stay there. Their armed associates watched them from the sidelines. They killed police officers before our eyes. They committed atrocities. They beat them up severely. They tortured them to death before our eyes. When they led me and other hostages along, we had our hands tied with wire behind our backs. There was rope around our necks. That is why we were not able to walk steadily. One man was stumbling as he walked, and then a militant escorting us. He was between 40 and 45 and I will recognize him if I see him, approached him and shot him in the calf. I saw it with my own eyes. There were people who wanted to go back, and when they did so, they were shot in the back. We also intended to state that we wanted to go back, but when I saw how they shot them, I was scared to death. I cannot say that these criminals are human beings. I consider them to be creatures in the image of human beings. Maybe I'm wrong. But these people should not live in society. If I'm given power, I would ban them from living in society. These people tortured me a great deal. They wanted to torture me and all other dead to do it. One of them said, Shoot them all. Shoot these dirty bastards. Another rebel said, Why shoot them? We will kill them slowly. Watch me, he said, as he used his assault rifle to batter around the head hostages lying face down. No one dared to raise their heads. Anyone who did so would be immediately punished by a punch in the face. Watch how he will die said a man as hefty as I am. Then he stepped on me and started kicking his heels against my head. When one of the hostages stood up and moved slowly, a man in military uniform shot him dead on the spot. He ordered everybody to stand up and said that everybody would be shot dead and then they ordered us to move towards a highway. When we almost reached the highway in the area of the second military block house, they drove us towards the Cholpan cinema. They poured kerosene on us when we reached the traffic lights near the Cholpan cinema and said that they would set fire on us if we tried to escape. He 